Okay, um, thanks everybody for being here in uh, 2022 after you know one year of uh, pause for conferences in general. I don't know how many of you have been to conferences. I'm sure you're a little bit shocked by the amount of people that are downstairs and the craziness, but welcome to Vegas. We thought it was a good intermediary point for in general, uh, lastly, Vim meetings having happened on the East Coast. So we want to be a bit closer to the West Coast and take advantage of things that are happening here. Uh, first of all, I want to thank uh, Bell and Seth for the amazing work on organizing the conference. It hasn't been easy after, you know, this pause to getting all things back together. But it's really great that you guys showed up. You guys are here. This is really important for Dream uh, and for the rest of the conference. We are a community, and so it's, it's actually great to see each other. Finally, even if uh, we're still wearing masks, which we should do, and not everybody does downstairs, as you've seen. So I just want to thank uh, the Dream Directors. So we are a group of 10 people that you can see there where we discuss uh, what Dream Challenge should be about. We try to vet, we try to think about what's the future of Dream. Uh, of course, we're just a set of 10 people that represent the community and you are the community. So thanks for being here again. And uh, our chair, Paul Boutros, who we'll hear uh, more about. Uh, Gustavo Stolovitsky uh, couldn't be here uh, this time. I think this is the first time he doesn't attend the conference, but you know, uh, his spirit lingers on, uh, and I hope you, you'll see that. Um, just a brief history, this is the 14th time that we organized a Dream Conference. We've been uh, a lot on the East Coast. Uh, we've tried uh, one international set in, in Barcelona uh, just after the financial crisis uh, that crashed our finances, but now we are uh, back um, you know, to, to America. We did, uh, in 2016, actually also on a election day, we did a conference in Arizona. It didn't w went very well at that time. Actually, I was afraid of not being able to take a plane back to New York after, you know, what happened. So I hope uh, this year you all voted and I hope uh, things go well for whoever you root. Um, uh, last year, uh, sorry, in 2020, we had a virtual event. Last year, we just decided to not organize a conference. This is again an experiment. Dream is always an experiment. It's always about who's gonna show up to participate in the challenges, who's gonna show up to the conference. So again, really thanks for being here. Th thanks for having participated in the conference. People come from all over the world. Some people couldn't come also uh, for, for all sorts of reasons, but it's great to have you guys uh, here. Um, here are, you know, Dream uh, Conference goes together with RSG, and so we have a joint scientific uh, program chairs. And you, uh, after you know a day and a half of Dream, you'll have uh, RSG until Friday. Uh, we're very lucky to have uh, a couple of great uh, keynotes for Dream. Lior Pacher, who you will, uh, Pachter, who you will hear right after my presentation, and uh, Melissa Handel tomorrow. Uh, as you know, Dream is really a community of about 3,000 registrants. They don't all participate in every challenge, but they're there. Um, today, there's in the conference, there's 23 oral communications, 55 posters, and uh, eight Dream posters. So it's always nice to uh, have uh, to, to be able to discuss the challenges that, that went on uh, this year, and you will hear about. Um, there's already ongoing challenges. Uh, that these are the next following challenges. Uh, cough diagnostic algorithm for tuberculosis is the first dream challenge that uses actually sound as an input feature. Um, heart failure prediction using microbiome data. Uh, the Brax continuous evaluation that you will hear of also um, tomorrow, or I think today. Um, and then a couple of other um, uh, dream challenges that are, that, that are happening. Uh, <clears throat> dream challenges have gone for, you know, almost 15 years since 2007 with um, you know, many publications and many different topics. It really started as a network inference uh, biology community, but I think it has expanded to different directions, always centered on um, benchmarking algorithms, uh, available data sets in the most cases, sometimes clinical data sets are not always available, but reproducibility, uh, democratizing science, and uh, openness, uh, open science, and, and open communities. Uh, these are the um, latest challenges. 
uh, that will happen. We also like to, uh, of course, publish. We're not just you know, a community that solves problems and, and submits algorithms. We like to try to interpret uh, the solutions, the features, and try to extract some biology out of it. So these are some of the papers that have been uh, published in, in 2022. In general, we publish, as you know, uh, um, uh, a paper that describes all the results of the challenge and the analysis of all the algorithms that have been submitted, and those are highlighted in, in blue uh, for the, the latest challenges. But also, uh, all the participants are able to publish their own papers describing their methods and, of course, making them available. So this is this is also important part of the, the community. <clears throat> uh, I'm just sharing some of the you know other papers from the previous year, given that we didn't have a conference last year. Um, you know, you, as you can see, there's a, there's a long list. Uh, we are also have our own you know Google Scholar page. Uh, we are, uh, I would say, a mid-career, somehow successful uh, scientist. Uh, although, as you can see, we are starting to uh, you know not having as much impact. So you know, we need to keep energized. A lot of people are, you know, taking this approach, of course, now with the kind of fusion between AI, computational biology, and, and data, crowdsourcing, and, and, you know, challenge competitions are a big thing. Um, so, you know, we, we need to keep focused and energized for Dream to continue uh, dreaming. Uh, <clears throat> so for that, we have a, a, a few things of funding that will help us continue uh, doing challenges. So um, um, we obtained a bridge to AI um, funding from NIH, which is a consortium to create standards and data sets to accelerate biomedical AI, and we'll be able to uh, fund four challenges a year, so that's a lot. And we're also continuing on some of our uh, out-of-the-way challenges, such as the olfaction uh, challenge. So I just leave you with uh, the schedule for the following uh, two days. <clears throat> we will have our keynote, then uh, the, one of the challenges is the results from the preterm birth challenge. Uh, then uh, after a panel, we'll have the Brad's Continuous Evaluation Challenge. Uh, and tomorrow we will have the uh, Predicting Gene Expression Using Random Promoter Sequences Challenge. And finally, the NTPD1 Response Prediction Dream Challenge, uh, followed by uh, Future of Dream uh, Q&A that where, well, Paul Boutros will uh, talk more about uh, Dream and, and where it's going. I also invite you tomorrow to a special session from the, an NCI IBM workshop uh, that's about open science uh, and accelerated discovery. It should be an interesting session. Uh, I leave you here just with the uh, lessons learned from, from Dream. I always like uh, this slide. Um, and I also uh, want to thank all of you uh, once more.